Do you want to learn Kubernetes, but you've been told that it is very difficult? Give me just 10 minutes and we will be installing and learning the basics of Kubernetes with just a few commands. Let's start. we will be installing MicroKTS. MicroKTS is a certified Kubernetes distribution created by Canonical. I chose it because it's the easiest and fastest way you have to install Kubernetes. It is very lightweight, so it will run on your PC, laptop, or even on a small server without an issue. And it supports Linux, Windows, and macOS. In the context of this tutorial, what we need is at least two BCPUs and 4 GB of RAM. Despite MicroKTS memory footprint is small, around 500 to 600 megabytes, it's better to have a little more so we can run our applications. And I will be using Ubuntu as the operating system, and obviously we need an internet connection. Let's start. To install MicroKTS, all we need is one command line, thanks to this snap provided by Canonical. Installation takes really few seconds. And next step, we need to do some housekeeping. We add ourselves to the MicroKTS group. And we make sure that we own the .cube folder and we reload the settings. Next step is to check if MicroKTS is running. And there it is. It is already running. And as promised, this was the fastest and easiest installation possible. Next step is to install three add-ons. We will be installing DNS, ingress and storage that we will use later on. Now I want to give you a pro tip, yeah, mm -hmm. um, which is rather than using the full command microcadest.cubectl, we will create an alias. I like to use K and we will also enable autocomplete. It is very difficult to work in Kubernetes without autocomplete. So make sure to do this step. The first concept we are going to learn today, it's the pod. The pod is the smallest deployable unit in Kubernetes. You can imagine it as a logical host, which runs isolated within your operating system. Within this host, you can deploy one or more containers. Typically, one of these containers would be your application, while the other containers would be sidecars, that perform additional duties, like logging for instance. These containers, they would share a contest. And this contest would include the file system, the network, the processes, users, and hostname. Let's get started and create some pods. To create a pod, we just use the run command, we give the pod a name, and we select an image, in my case nginx. Then we check if the pod is running with the get command. We can then execute a command against the pod uh, by using the exec instruction, like I can issue the printemp. And I can also have an interactive session with the TI flags. In this case, I will be taking a bash. Next step, I check if nginx is running. I go on the local host, and as you can see, nginx is there, up and running. Yeah. Yeah. In next step, we create another pod, uh, we call it pod2, this time we use the PC box image and we issue a command, sleep infinity, otherwise you will see the pod restarting. We get the details and we try the execution of the command as we did before, to check the environment variable. This time, what we're going to do is, we will try to hit the welcome page from this pod. So I get the IPs, I know now the IP of pod1 and I execute a command against port 2. In this case, I'm going to use wget. As you can see, we reach the welcome page once again. We have just learned how to create pods. However, in production, it's very uncommon to declare pods and we use deployments instead. The deployment allows you to define whether you want one replica of your pod or you want more instances, more replicas, like I would decide to F3. Another function of the deployment is that one, to allow you to define a strategy for the updates, like we could update the pods all at once, 
or use a rolling update, which is the default strategy employed by Kubernetes. Let's see how we create deployments. Before we create a deployment, I'm going to delete the previous pod using the delete command. And then by using the create deployment, we define a deployment name. We choose the image and we also choose the number of replicas we want, in our case too. Using the get command, we check if the deployment is ready and we can do the get on the pods to see if there are actually two pods running. There they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next step is to get the IPs and see if we can contact the pods again. We will be using the previous pod two with the busy box image. So I have two IPs, one ending in 73 and one in 74. I hit the 73 and the 2x and I hit the 74 and the 2x as well. In the previous sections, we learned that pods can communicate with each other using their IP. So this operation would work. However, it is not proper practice. The reason is that if pod 2 is killed, by Kubernetes or it dies on its own, when it is replaced, it might get a different IP. And this means that pod 1 would be unable to communicate with pod 2. So how do we fix this problem? We can use a service. The service which has its own IP allows pod 1 to communicate again with pod 2. Most importantly, should pod 2 be killed, the target IP would be updated automatically. Another important function of the service is that in the case of deployments where we have multiple instances of pod 2, it acts as the load balancer. So pod 1 is able to communicate with 10 instances of pod 2 in a transparent fashion. Let's see how we create them. Services identify target pods using labels. In fact, I will be showing you the label of the pods and now we can create the service by using the expose command. We're going to expose the deployment nginx on port 80. If you look at the description, you will notice that the labels contain the same value, app equals nginx. Uh, moreover, we know that it's working because we already have as endpoints the target IPs of the pod we created before. We want to verify now that the service is working and we will use wget from bot2, but this time we use the service name. And as you can see, everything is fine. We reached the welcome page once again. Let's deal now with the last topic of this tutorial, which is the ingress. So, let's imagine this scenario. We have a cluster, which is represented by the larger container, where I have pods and services. Something you need to be aware of is that a service is visible only within the Kubernetes cluster. This means that a client outside the cluster is not able to communicate with it. So how do we solve it? We solve it by using the ingress. The ingress is a construct in Kubernetes that allows an external client to communicate with the service inside it, which in turn would direct the traffic to the pods. Let's do it. To create the ingress, the first thing we need to do is identify which ingress classes are supported in our environment, in our case public and nginx. Then we can use the create ingress command, we give it a name, we specify the class and we define the rule. The rule in this case is path equals the name of the service and the port. Now we can describe the ingress and we see that host path and backend all make sense. In fact, the backend corresponds to our two pods. To test the ingress, we go outside the cluster, so we use the browser on my host, and as you can see, there it is. We did it once again. This is the end of the video. As you can see, using Kubernetes, it's much easier than we think. I know that at times I went a bit fast, and I just touched briefly on most topics, so if you want, I created a blog post that you find in the description that you can read at your own pace. This is one of my first videos. I'm sure there is a lot to improve. So if you have any comment, positive or, or negative, leave it down below. And I plan to create other videos like this. So even if you have suggestions, like topics, I could take it. 
I'm an architect by profession, so if you want, you find me also on LinkedIn and I will be happy to add you. See you next time.